Chapter 9, Lesson 5, Essential Question. How can you identify a relationship between two numerical patterns? Numerical just means using numbers. Unlock the problem. On the first week of school, Joe purchases two movies and six songs from his favorite media website. If he purchases the same number of movies and songs each week, how does the number of songs purchased compare to the number of movies purchased? Just from one week to the next. Press pause, underline what you're being asked to find, and circle the important information. You should have underlined basically the last part of the sentence. How does the number of songs compare com to the number of movies from one week to the next? Circled two movies and six songs. And then um, I used a different color for same number each week to show that it's going to be a repeated thing um, between each of them. So it's going to be the same number repeated over and over. We should also be able to answer this box over here. How many movies does he purchase each week? Well, that was one of the numbers you circled. Two. And how many songs does he purchase? Six. Now moving on to step one. It says to use the two rules given to generate the first four terms in the sequence for the number of movies and then the sequence for the number of songs. So the sequence for the number of movies each week starts out at two. Um, and then how many did he purchase each week? Two. So two plus two is four. Then we have to add another two, six. And then another two is eight. And then the sequence for the number of songs um, starts out at six. We add 6, that's 12, adding 6, that's 18, adding 6, 24. Step 2. Write the number of pairs that relate to the number of, mo number of movies to the number of songs. So basically they're wanting you to write them as pairs with the comma between them. So do the movies first and then the songs. Okay, so I took them and I used the colors so that we could see where they came from. The first pattern are the first pair, or the X and coordinates, if you think about it that way. And then um, the black is our songs. So let's look at step three now. For each number pair, compare the number of movies to the number of songs. Then write a rule to describe this relationship. So think, for each related number, the second number is blank times as great as the first number. How many times does it take to get from this first number, 2, to get 6? How many times does it take you to get from 4 to 12? And so on. Think that through. Try it. Press pause. Well, I know 2 times 3 would equal 6. 4 times 12, 3 equals 12. 6 times 3 equals 18. And 8 times 3 equals 24. So the rule for the relationship between these is going to be multiply by 3. And the reason why I spell the word out is because as you get farther into geometry, X is going to start meaning something other than multiply, but if it came down to it, times 3 would probably be okay. So, from one week to the next, the number of songs Joel's purchased is three times as many as the number of movies purchased. Example. When Alice completes each level in her favorite video game, she wins three extra lives and six gold coins. What rule can you write to relate the number of gold coins to the number of extra lives she has won at any level? How many extra lives will Alice have won after she completes eight levels? Underline what you're being asked to find. This one has two, and then circle the important information. Okay, so you should have underlined what rule can you write for relating gold coins to extra lives? That's the first one you're being asked to find, and for that one, the extra information is the, or the three, important information is the three extra lives and the six gold coins. Then you're asked a second question, so to get full credit for this, you would have to have answered both, both questions. 
So how many extra lives will she have one after eight levels? So I circled eight also. So first, let's answer the first question. And they created a table. They have the level, and um, each level is numbered. Then they have a lives column and a coins, or lives row and a coins row. So if we look here, it's extra lives, zero, three, six, nine. We know that from the information that was given to us for extra lives, you're adding three. And the gold coins, zero, six, twelve, we know that because of the information we were given, you're adding six. So let's look what they tell us for step one. Step one, to the left of the table, complete the rule for how you find the next number of lives, one from one level to the next. Oops, we already did that. So zero to three, six, nine, twelve, they told us you're adding three. So you're adding three for each of the lives. So from one level to the next, she earns three of them. Step number two is the same step for the coins. You look, 0, 6, 12, 18. What do you do? We're adding 6 to each of those. Again, this was information that was given to us. You're adding these numbers based on the story problem. So from one level to the next, she earns 6 more gold coins. So if you write these as pairs, 6, 3, remember number 1 was, so this is level 1. What they did this time for level 1 was this is the number of coins, so I'm going to put a C above it, and the second one is the number of lives. It's important to remember which one you wrote first. So if level 1, the coins is 6 and the lives are 3. Level 2, three, four, fill those out. So you should have ended up with 12, 6, 18, 9, and 24, 12, making sure that you kept them in the same spot so that you wrote coins first and live second. So now we need to finish answering our first question, which was write a rule that we could use for any level. And so if we complete the rule, to the right of the table that describes how they are related, the pairs are related, and then use the rule for the second question, extra lives at level eight. So for each level, the number of extra lives is blank as great as the number of gold coins. So they're asking us, we start with the coins to three, six to three. The coins, 12 to six. 18 to nine, 12 to 24 to 12. What do you notice? We notice that it's less, so if it's blank as great, it is going, it's half, right? It's one half as great as the number of gold coins. So the rule, if we look back up at the top real here real quick, we're looking to fill this in, multiply by blank or divide by blank. So if we're trying to get half of a number, what do you multiply by? you would end up multiplying by one half. Or dividing wise, what would you do? It, you would divide by two. So let's go back down here where they want you to write it. Rule wise, you would say you would multiply by one half or divide by 2. So that's the rule. So now that we have our rule, let's think about after 8 levels. If we look back up at our table right here, now I notice I'm going back to where my information is a lot. I could keep counting by 6's, but we know that it's adding 6 each time, so 6 times 8 got us 48 coins and so if we're multiplying by a half or dividing by 2 because that's the same thing how many extra lives are we going to have? We're having 48 multiplying by a half or dividing by 2. What is one half of 48? It is 24. So that means after 8 levels 
Alice will have won 24 extra lives. Looking at Sharon's show. The directions for number one state, use the given rules to complete each sequence. Then complete the rule that describes how nickels are related to dimes. Okay, so they want you to fill these in and find the rule. Now in numbers two and three, they want you to complete the rule that describes how one sequence is related to the other. So they want you to um, finish the rule and then use the rule to find the missing number. Press pause as you work through these three problems. For number one, um, they wanted you to use the given rule to complete the table. So for the nickels, you're supposed to add five every time. So one nickel is five cents, two is 10, and then counting by fives, so your missing term is 25. Now for the dimes, they want you to add 10. So you're 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Now they wanted you to find the rule that tells how nickels are related to dimes. So that means what are you doing to the nickel to um, get to the amount of the dime? So they're telling you that you multiply. So let's look, five times something equals 10. 10 times something equals two. 15 times something equals 30. So if we keep going, 25 times something equals 50. That is multiplying by 2. Let me fix that mark. You're multiplying by 2. And that answer is number 1. Number 2, complete the rule and then find the missing term. So multiply the number of books by blank to find the amount spent. Okay, so we're looking at the number of books, 3 to 12. 3 times something equals 12. 6 times something equals 24. 9 times something equals 36. Well, starting at the lowest numbers, I know 3 times 4 equals 12. 6 times 4, 24. Yep, 9 times 4 is 36. I think we got it. So you multiply times 4. So now, for day 8, because you notice they skipped, we're looking for day 8, 24 books, Multiply that times 4, and you should have came up with 96. Looking at number 3, they're telling us we're dividing this time. So divide the weight of the bag by blank to find the number of marbles. So let's look. We have the number of marbles being 10 and the weight being 30. Number of marbles 20, the weight 60. <clears throat> but since we're dividing the weight, we should look at the weight first. So let's look at 30. We have 30 divided by something gives us 10. 60 divided by something gives us 20. 90 divided by something gives us 30. Well, I can, these are all 10s, so I could actually ignore my zeros and think 3 divided by 1, hmm, that equals 3. 6 divided by um, 3 is 2, or 6 divided by something equals 2, so that's 6 divided by 3. So 60 divided by 3 would also be 20. 90 divided by 3, I think we found it. So you divide the weight by 3. So let's look at 360. 360 has a 0 on the end. If I cover that 0, 36 divided by 3 would be 12. And if I add that 0 back, it's going to be 120. You are now free to work on your other tasks.